this was our Odevoid H4 Ultra at the end of the last video. Before I go into the changes made to it this week, I'd like to cover a couple of interesting items on the Hard Kernel website with regard to the H4. When the Odevoid H3 Plus was launched, customers were looking to use the M2 SSD socket on the underside of the motherboard for items other than SSDs. In a previous video, we added a PCI expansion slot connected to the M2 socket to allow the addition of a graphics card to the Odroid. Logically, customers were hoping that an M2 SATA expansion card could be added to allow more SATA connections. However, at the time, Hard Kernel confirmed that the H3 Plus just couldn't handle this. The Hard Kernel website now has news that the H4 Ultra will now support this. I'll add a link in the description below to this page which gives details. Whilst it does mean sacrificing the speed of an M2 SSD, it does allow the dazzling possibility of no less than 9 SATA ports on your Odroid. Even allowing one port for your operating system, there is a lot you can do with 8 SSDs or hard disk drives connected. The second item will appeal to those who wish to mount their Odroid in a standard ITX case. This item was showing on Hard Kernel's website and has now appeared on the European Distributor's site as the mounting sockets for the Odroid won't line up with the standoffs on an ITX board, they have produced a converter board, rear panel and cables with a power switch, which all allows you to fit your Odroid H4 into a standard case. This is currently listed for $15 or £24. The remaining work on this project was to cut the grills to size from perforated polypropylene sheet. These were then spray painted with Plastidip to match our last project. Once the grills were in place, the power switch needed to be fitted. As the layout of the board has changed radically from the H3 Plus, I checked the documentation on the Hard Kernel website for the pinouts on the GPIO header. Unfortunately, one of the 20 terabyte drives we had ordered for this project was faulty and we are currently awaiting a replacement. So I've decided to connect and configure just the two hard disk drives for the moment. As promised, these are the performance results for this new H4 Ultra computer in non-turbo mode. I've run the same tests on the H3 Plus NAS we built some time ago, which is also running in non-turbo mode to allow a good comparison. As you can see, the H4 Ultra scores significantly higher across the board, which is entirely understandable given its faster CPU, increased core count, improved graphics and faster memory. We can now boot up our new NAS. As you can see, the second Noctua extract fan has now been fitted at the rear of the case to cool the hard disk drives. These have a 3 pin connection and will run at a constant 2000 RPM. The bubble jack socket on the I.O. panel has been routed back to the rear of the case using a power lead sold by Odroid. We'll now switch to the output from the computer to allow us to log in. As we have two operational 20 terabyte drives in place, I've configured these using storage spaces in a two disk mirror. This allows multiple copies of your files to be stored, so that if one drive fails, you still have an intact copy on the other drive. Storage spaces are easy to manage, allowing additional drives to be added later. In order to test out these two mirrored drives, I've transferred over around 500 gigabytes of my previous video's recordings. This has gone well and the information is now securely stored on the NAS. Hopefully you have found these videos useful, but that's it for today. Thank you for watching.